During this video, I'll go over the steps required to set up one of TND's TR7WB data loggers together with the TR7WB slash NW for Windows software. The TR7WB series of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled wireless loggers ship from the factory for seamless integration with TND's no-cost cloud-based web storage service. Setup for the TR7WB loggers is relatively simple and a straightforward process comprised of a few basic steps. Setting up your web storage service account, registering your loggers with that account, downloading and installing the TR7WB slash NW for Windows software, configuring the data loggers operating parameters, setting the alarm parameters, and connecting the unit to your Wi-Fi LAN and the internet. The first step is to set up a web storage service account. Using any browser, navigate to webstorage-service.com. Click on the new user registration link. Enter an email address for the account administrator and a password. Your user ID will be sent to the email address that you enter. You should also note that this is also the default email address to which warning notifications will be sent if you enable those. So choose this email address accordingly. Once you receive that user ID, navigate to the login page, enter the user ID and password, and log in. Once you log in through any web browser, you will see the startup guide directly on the website. Click on Add a Device. Here you'll be asked for the logger's serial number and registration code. There is a label with the serial number and the registration code included in the box with every TR7WB. Click the Add button. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, and click on Devices, we'll see the serial number of the device which I've just registered and the notification that is waiting for the first data. This completes the initial setup of the web storage service account. The next step is to download and install the installation and configuration software. Navigate to tnd.com. From that page, go to Software and Apps. Directly at the top is the TR7WB slash NW series. The second item down is the configuration software, TR7WB slash NW for Windows. Click, click on that link and begin downloading. You may also at this time want to download the TND graphs, T graphs software, which will give you a very valuable tool for visualizing the data that you send. Once that download is completed and you've completed the installation, navigate to the Start menu, scroll down within the Start menu to TND WB, NW for Windows, and within that is the configuration software, TR7WB NW for Windows. Click on it to open it. Next, take your data logger with the batteries installed and the USB cable that's included and plug that into your computer. You'll see that the device shows up in the connected device window. If this window does not populate with the logger settings within the first few seconds, this usually means that there is a problem with the installation of the USB driver. To get help for this process, go back to the Start menu 
and back to the TND folder, TND WB NW for Windows, and click on the Help for Unit Recognition Failure. This will open a help file that will take you through the process of checking and reinstalling the logger's device driver. Once you have this open and you have the, the device showing, the, showing up in the window, go to the Start Recording tab. Here's where you enter the recording mode. Most customers should choose endless so that the logger will record the data in a circular buffer fashion, meaning after the first 16,000 readings are recorded, it will start overwriting and log record onto the older readings so that you always have a continuous package of data. The typical recording interval that most customers would use would be 15 or 30 minutes, meaning that the logger will take a sample and store the data every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes. That is usually very sufficient for the typical refrigerator or freezer monitoring application. Immediate start is the expected way to go so that the minute you stop the configuration, the recording will begin. You should also set up a group name. So if the logger is going to be organized into groups, lab number one, upstairs lab, whatever that may be, and a device name specific to this data logger. For this example, I'll name it Fridge1. You can also assign a name for each of the two individual temperature channels available within the data logger. If you have separate areas for in the freezer and are using or refrigerator and using both sensors in the same cavity, those can be named whatever is appropriate for your application. When you've completed this, click the Start Recording button. This does give you the prompt that if you are starting the recording, if you have already have data stored on the logger, that that will be deleted in order to start a new recording session. So it's important that if you have previously recorded data that is important to you, that you download that data directly from the logger before proceeding with starting a new recording. Next, click on the auto upload settings. The first thing to do is to configure the warning settings. This is where the upper and or lower limits on a per sensor basis can be configured to trigger the alarms that will be sent to you. So for instance, if I'm in a five degree C freezer and I want to be alerted if the temperature rises above nine degrees C, put nine in. If I don't have a lower limit, leave the box unchecked. I want the sensor warning to be on and the warning judgment time. The warning judgment time is the period that the condition must remain active before an alarm is generated. If a thermal buffer is surrounding the end of the probe, you have an automatic judgment time because of the time constant for the temperature to reach the sensor tip. In addition, you could say during restock or retrieval periods, normally we would have a 10 minute cycle. Whatever fits the application, this choice should be made. If you want to receive battery warning alarms to let you know when the battery level in the logger has reached 20% left, this button should also be turned to on. It's important to remember to send the settings by clicking the Send Settings button to the logger to complete this portion of the setup. Once you've send, sent the settings, you can close the window. The upload interval is how frequently will the logger take the collected readings in its local memory and push them up to the web storage service. This is the single most critical parameter that affects the battery lifetime of the logger. It should not be set 
too frequently, and it must be set at a longer interval than the record period. Once an hour is certainly appropriate, but every 12 hours may be good enough for the application. It's important to note that the alarming will be triggered strictly based on the judgment time, not based on this upload interval. The upload interval only speaks to how frequently will that data be pushed and available for viewing on the web storage service. Again, remember to send the settings. Most people would choose DHCP with the radio button click to on to allow the Wi-Fi access point and the router assembly to send the IP address and all the addresses of the related IT devices to configure the logger. The logger can connect to up to three available Wi-Fi networks. So if there are backup or emergency networks, or if the logger will be moving through different network areas. Choose the network name or the SSID that's available. Choose the security type and enter in the password. If you use a proxy server in your organization, enter in the IP address of the proxy server and the port number. Again, remember to send the settings. When you're done with the settings, you should leave the USB connected for now, or you can remove it as your wish. At this point, the Wi-Fi and the web icons become important indicators for understanding the status of the logger's connectivity. This is a picture of the Wi-Fi icon, and you can also see the web icon in the same picture. When you click the Send Settings button, you will see both the Wi-Fi and the web icons start to blink. After about 15 seconds, the logger will attempt to connect to the web storage service through the configured Wi-Fi access point. While this process is in progress, you will see the Wi-Fi icon stop blinking and begin to scroll up vertically. When the process has completed, after about five or 10 seconds, one of three conditions will be reflected in the icons. If the Wi-Fi icon and the web icon are both on solid, that's great. That means the connection process is successful and the logger was able to connect to the web storage service server through the access point and to the internet. If the Wi-Fi icon and the web icon both continue to blink, the connection attempt to the access point or router has failed. This could be a problem with incorrectly entering the password or the network name not being available. If the Wi-Fi icon is on solid and the web icon continues to blink, this means that the logger has successfully connected with the wireless access point, but it was not able to log on to the web storage service server. This is almost always a firewall issue. Before calling in for support, speak to your IT personnel for assistance. Their involvement will be required anyway, and it could be accomplished quicker. If you have a problem connecting to the access point, that's a similar task for the IT people that provide you with assistance. Because everyone's Wi-Fi network can be a little different, we have a challenge trying to solve those and cannot solve those on our own. It would be helpful to do that with your IT person before calling into support. Once you've got the access configured, you can return back to the web storage service and as a quick test by very quickly pushing the record stop red button on the face of the logger one time with a quick push and release that will force the logger to initiate a, a communication immediately without waiting for the upload interval to elapse once that is complete and you've forced that upload within about five minutes you will see the settings transmitted to the web storage service, which tells you that your configuration is complete. There, my recording interval one minute. The upload interval was left at six hours with warning settings on and the group name of group one. Most of these settings, names, and intervals can be changed 
directly from the web storage service and not require the local software. This concludes the video. Thank you. Thank you.